Hello, everyone. My name is Andreas Ionisio. I'm with the University of Cyprus. And in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the paper titled SOC Membership Inference is Hard and Appeals in Thought. So let's get right to the point. The first uh, membership inference attacks were first proposed as tracing attacks by Honor et al. back in, 2000, in 2008, where the authors actually leveraged published statistics about the genomic status in order to infer the presence of a particular genome. Later, they have been extended to train machine learning models as MIAs, the first proposed by Shokri in 2017. And since then, uh, this type of attack has attracted significant attention by the community. Uh, now, the goal of MIAs is to actually determine whether a particular sample was used to train a machine learning model. This uh, type of attacks uh, has severe consequences. For example, if we have an ML model that classifies a patient's information to a specific disease class, then learning that, that someone's data is included in the, in the data set allows us to draw conclusions about uh, their health status. In addition, if we have uh, a data set that aggregates movements of Alzheimer's patients, then learning that specific individuals uh, included, were included in the data set implies that they suffer from the disease. Uh, from a different perspective, membership inference can be useful for supporting the suspicion that the model was, was trained on a personal data without an adequate legal basis or for a purpose not compatible with the data collection process. Uh, second, a force uh, individual rights, such as, such as the right to be forgotten, and finally, detect violations of data protection regulations, such as the GDPR. Now, this presentation is split in two parts. The first part is a systematization of knowledge regarding representative MIAs found in the literature. The second part is an experimental evaluation of several parameters that may affect their performance. Now, let's see the first part. So, uh, MIAs uh, can be actually conducted under specific settings and assumptions and actually experience different limitations. For example, we know that most MIAs work on overfitted models, but fail when facing well jazzable ones. In addition, MIAs that work on well jazzable models often impose significant limitations uh, which undermine their practicality. Uh, in general, a systematic classification of MIAs found in the literature, as well as an in-depth analysis of their assumptions and limitations which affect their genetic applicability or their performance, is currently lacking from the literature. And actually, this is what we did in our paper. Uh, we have presented a comprehensive systematization of knowledge by reviewing 33 papers in total uh, from the first attack in 2008 up to papers published uh, up to 2022. Uh, as shown in this snapshot, for each attack, we document several parameters. For example, the target environment, uh, whether or not the attack is agnostic about the target model's internals, the performance on overfitted versions of the targets, and the utilized data sets. In our paper, for each attack, we present a summary of its operation and highlight the downsides and limitations that affect their practicality or their effectiveness. Now, what is most important is that our source kept us in raising specific research questions that still remain unanswered. Now, let's see those research questions. First, we know that uh, an ML model's generalization is linked to its vulnerability against MIAs. The higher its generalization, the higher its robustness. In addition, we know that an ML model's generalization depends on the utilized optimizer and generalization technique. As a result, one might ask how do specific uh, generalization techniques affect MIA success rates? Do specific uh, optimizers or regularizers lead to models which are more robust or more vulnerable to MIAs compared to other models they with different uh, generalization techniques? Uh, second, from our SOC, we saw that most MIAs uh, are not actually agnostic regarding the target models that are distribution and the samples through class. For example, some of them generate distances from the same distribution as the target models data set for training shadow models that actually mimic the target model's behaviors. And others assume access to the actual target model's data set for which they know their ground truth membership status. Uh, now, uh, the ground truth membership information of data records is commonly unavailable, given only black box access to the target model. However, such information may be revealed in case of potential data breach incidents, which actually occurred several times in the past. As a result, in case of such incidents, one could explore what is the actual benefit provided to potential adversaries in case they have access to a large portion of the target model's uh, data set for, for which they know not the samples through class, but their actual ground truth membership status. Now, uh, in, third, uh, increasing uh, an artificial neural network's layers increases at the same time its performance, but as the depth of ANS increases, so does the risk of overfitting. As a result, one might ask, are deep ANNs more vulnerable to me as the shallow ones? And this is actually the third research question. Does increasing the number of layers facilitate me as an if yes, to what extent? So in our paper, we follow an experimental approach to answer uh, those research questions. Now let's see the second part. 
Uh, before presenting the results, there, let's see the threat model considering this work. In our paper, we focus solely on targeting web jazz models, web jazz classification models. And second, we utilize only black box adversaries that are able to query the target model with an input sample, uh, receive the confidence score for each class as a respond, and perform any arbitrary offline computation using those confidence scores to decide whether the sample is a member or not. Uh, now let's see the results. For this research question, we, we want to actually see which learning sentence contribute, contribute to uh, membership first attacks and to what extent. As a result, uh, in other words, we want to compare the success rates achieved on web jazzable models trained with common optimizers and regularizers. For this reason, we train several target models using some of the most common optimizers and regularizers, and then based on the confidence scores derived, we train the attacker model, which in this case is a material perceptron in the optimal black box attack setting. Uh, what we mean by that is that the adversaries know all the confidence code vector and ground truth membership status pairs, and they can also query the target model at the right times for obtaining those confidence scores, so there is no need for any shadow models. Finally, in order to avoid any bias uh, when selecting specific training testing subsets, we randomly compose those assets and report uh, the average. Now, uh, our results suggest that all tested optimizers and regularizers lead to comparably robust ML models. In other words, then the choice of the optimizer uh, or regularizer has no discriminable influence on the MIA success rates. In addition, we saw that not using any regularization technique does not necessarily lead to high MIA success rates, and this shows that MIA depends uh, more on the target model generalization rather than to a particular uh, regularization techniques. In addition, we saw that MIA success rate is uh, linked to the target model's generalization gap and not particularly its, its performance because in cases where large regularization values lead to low performing ML models but with small generalization gaps, uh, the MIA success rates uh, remain close to the random guessing baseline. And finally, we performed the same experiments on uh, various data sets uh, and, and observed the same results. Now, uh, for the second is a question, uh, who that suggests that the powerful black box MIA requires enough labeled output probability distributions for member and non-member instances? And now, while, while this has been shown for over filter models, it is yet clear whether the same facts hold for well other ones. Uh, now, uh, who had defined two black box settings. The first is black box blind, where the adversary can only query the target model and receive the confidence score for each class as a response. And the second one, adversary, namely black box, is similar to the previous one, but as used adversaries who have access to a portion of instances from the target model's data set, but for which they know the actual ground truth membership status. Now, for the attacker models, we use the k-means for the black box blind adversary and an MLP for black box. Both of these models have been utilized in similar research, achieving well above baseline success rates using uh, of, on target, target and overfitter models. Now, let's see the results on the, uh, on the black box blind adversary. The results remain close to the random guessing baseline, which means uh, that those attacks uh, cannot exploit any useful insight. Overall, this adversary achieves 53% uh, MIA success rate, we're targeting in G11, trained on CIFR 10. Again, we performed the same experience on different networks, trained on different classes, observed similar results. Uh, now, in contrast, we then suggest report well above baseline success rates using the same clustering algorithm, but attacking, however, overfitter models. As a result, we conclude that web jazz models are significantly more robust than overfitted ones. I guess adversaries that only exploit the target instance as confidence scores. Now let's see the results for the black box adversary. Again, the MIA success rates uh, for different volumes of labeled input samples again remain close to the random guessing baseline. Uh, overall, this adversary achieves 54%, 55% MIA success rate when targeted in engine G11, 10 or 7 10. And we repeat our experience on different ANS from various data set, for trained from data sets from various domains and observing similar results. Contrary, existing MIA's and overfitted targets achieve well above baseline success rates using the same uh, classification model, if such auxiliary formation is available to the adversary. As a result, based on our experimental evidence, we we'll conclude that uh, well jazzable models are significantly more robust than well fitted ones, even against adversaries with partial ground to membership formation. In addition, we conclude that we had also observation that these black box MIA uh, performances analogous to the number of label instances available to the adversary does not apply to well jazzable targets rather than only to overfitted ones. Finally, as I've said earlier, increasing an ANS layers increases at the same time its more original capabilities. As a result, one might, one might ask whether DB ANS are more vulnerable to me as the shallow ones. For examining this aspect, we deploy both black box adversaries on VinGNG models uh, with various depths, train or server 10. Uh, again, our results suggest remaining close to the, random, to the random guessing baseline for all tested depths and for both black box attack settings. 
And thus, we conclude that DBNAs are not actually more vulnerable to our black box mias than shallow ones, or the opposite. Again, we perform the same experiments on different networks, trained on dresses from various domains, and observe similar results. But uh, why do MIAs on overfitted targets succeed? Uh, prior work succeed mainly on overfitted targets, and for acquiring such models, the authors intentionally train them for many epochs until a significant gap between the training and test inaccuracies appear. Uh, now, as Shokritala explained, MIAs actually exploit the difference in behavior of ML models in, on training versus test data. Uh, Overfitting the, model, overfitting the target model, however, uh, contributes to the affirmation behavior and thus enables MIAs. Uh, in contrast, well-judgeable models behave similarly on both member and non-member samples and thus cause uh, the majority of previous works to fail. Uh, as previous works suggested, for well-judgeable models, the only considerable difference appears between correctly classified samples and misclassified samples, and not actually between members and non-members. As, as a result, the conclusions uh, drawn on overfitted models must not be generalized towards just other ones. So what have we seen uh, in this presentation? We saw a SOC for representative MIAs found in the literature. We saw now an evaluation of common emergentization techniques. We have explored the contribution of potential data leaks to successful black box MIAs. And we also explored whether uh, artificial neural network steps contributes to MIAs and to what extent. And based on our uh, experimental evidence, uh, we actually conclude that MIAs are harder that we previously thought. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there is a question on Zulip from Sumia. She, uh, is, uh, they are asking, do we have an understanding of which models are more prone to successful MIAs compared to others? For instance, uh, NLP, LSTMs, or GRUs, or anything? Uh, okay, this is a good question, actually. Uh, what we saw is that, generally speaking, the, the more the model is overfitted, uh, the more it is vulnerable to MIA success rates. Uh, it has been shown, based on similar research, that natural, natural language models, natural language processing models are less vulnerable to MIAs in general. Uh, and thus, recent work is currently exploring this type of model, but uh, they also found to be vulnerable uh, to sp specific instances which are overfitted, for example, rare words uh, or other models or, or other input samples that contribute and after and ha are highly influential to neural parameters have been shown to be vulnerable to these models. So uh, if you ask me, I would say that uh, uh, convolutional networks and material perceptrons are more uh, classification models in general are more vulnerable to such attacks, while uh, models uh, deployed on uh, natural language processing uh, seem to be less vulnerable, but this is just my humble opinion. There's no any scientific evidence that shows this aspect, so. Thanks. Uh, another question from uh, Sinem on a similar uh, spirit. Uh, what about data sets that uh, might have outliers with high impact uh, on the model? E.g., e for example, uh, model memorizing these outliers, did you have some evidence and did you explore such settings? Yes, yes. Actually, actually, this is a very good question as well. In our experimental evidence, we observed the same behavior. There are some works that uh, pointed out that specific instances might be actually more vulnerable to MIAS, such as outliers, as you suggested, and, highly, and generally speaking, instances that are highly influential to the model's parameters. Uh, uh, we also explored similar behavior, but these outliers could be potentially, uh, are usually a small number of the whole. Uh, data sets and can, be, can be also uh, uh, trimmed or uh, excluded uh, from the data set using sophisticated techniques that pre-process pre uh, the data set before using it to train the model. Uh, so yes, this is actually one of our suggested future directions that uh, there is still work to be done on exploring uh, similar attacks on those specific instances and proposed techniques to mitigate them, even on such uh, outliers of high information opponents. Thank you. Another question from Sebastian. Uh, did you observe similar trends uh, even if you used label-only MIAs? Uh, we, we did, in our paper, we did not use uh, label-only attacks that only consider the heart, the discrete label, let's say, of the winning class. Uh, this is actually, uh, if there are some attacks that, uh, some black box attacks that utilize the confidence score, uh, this uh, method can prevent them from working out, but in our paper, we did not explore this aspect as well. In our attacks, we utilized all the confidence scores uh, for all the classes in order to carry out the... And the final question from Sumia. 
Uh, what about MIAs against uh, transfer learning? Do you uh, think they, they, they work equally well? And uh, again, this is something that we did not explore in our paper. Uh, and this is actually something interesting uh, to be considered in the future. We did not explore it at all. No idea. Okay, let's take the speaker again.